Hey there, and welcome to Facial Features Section 3. In this section, we're going to be going over hair. We're going to be covering adding missing hair, we're going to do shine, removing frizz, flyaways, head, or even going to show you how to paint hair, and we're going to show you how to darken eyelashes and eyebrows as well. So let's go ahead and open up the images for this section. We're going to hit Command or Control O, go to Hair, Images, and then we've got Retouch 2, 8, 16, and 25 JPEGs. Now we're including JPEGs because of the lower file size, but if you want to work on raw images or 16-bit TIFFs, all you have to do is export those out of Lightroom. So you would click on the same images here in Lightroom. Remember, we included the raw files with the getting started section, and um, you can just go ahead and export these out as TIFFs. The reason we sent you JPEGs is the file size is much slower. So for downloading, it makes a lot more sense. All right, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and quit Lightroom, but if you want to start work on any of these as TIFFs, just simply right click, go to export, and then you're gonna to wanna to choose right down here in your file settings, TIFF and 16 bit per component. All right, but for now, we're gonna work with JPEGs and you'll see they'll work really, really well. All right, so how we're gonna do this is we're gonna take this image by image and basically covering everything we need to cover per image. All right, let's go ahead and start with Flurn Retouch 8. There we go, I love this image. It's so pretty, so happy and fun. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get into it. First things I wanna do whenever I'm working on an image, um, kind of outline the things that I wanna change, fix, whatever, whatever, um, just to get an idea of what we're actually gonna be doing in the image. It helps me stay on track as well. Okay, so her hair looks really good in this image actually. Um, there are just a couple of things that I think we can, we can work on. Um, there are some flyaways here on the top. Um, this is a little bit like messy. I think we can definitely clean this up. So we'll just type in clean there. All right, this area here, I think we can clean that up as well. Now I'd like to see the end of this hair. It's kind of like flipping out and I don't see any end. So we're actually gonna extend the canvas to the right a little bit to give us a little more room. And um, this is going to allow us to kind of like get an even flow with the hair. And then I think we can kind of straighten up this line here a little bit, just to make that a little bit more clean. All right, and then we can definitely work on this area as well. Okay, so that's what we're going to do with this set of hair. All right, let's go ahead and make this invisible. First thing I wanna do is extend our canvas a little bit more to the right. So I'm gonna hit C for the crop tool. Now we're gonna make sure this is not checked. I want where it says delete crop pixels, make sure that's not checked. We're just gonna click and drag this to the right just a bit and hit enter. Okay, great. Now we have some space here on the right and we're ready to go ahead and start adding some background because we don't have any background. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. Let's just create a new layer and pop that underneath. And the easiest way to paint on this color, like, you know, gray or white backdrop, is to grab your brush tool, okay? Choose a large round soft brush and then just sample this color here on the background. And then I'm basically just painting it right on the background layer, on the layer underneath the background. And if you do a good enough job sampling the color, you can see how I can't paint that same color all the way up there because it won't, it won't work, right? So we'll start off sampling this color, you know, and then we'll sample that color because the background, you know, changes color a little bit throughout the image, right? There we go. Sample this color here. Sample that color, sample that color, and pretty soon you'll see we have a really nice extended background. Not too difficult to do. All right, looking good. So the next thing we're gonna do is shape the hair. Again, we wanna take care of like these bulges and things like that. I wanna clean this stuff up and clean that stuff up there. So I'm gonna create a stamp visible layer. It's basically just a copy of everything you see. So we'll create a new layer and then hit Shift Option Command E for elephant for our stamp visible layer. All right, and now we're gonna run this through our liquify filter. So we're gonna go to filter and then down here to liquify. Okay, now here in the liquified filter, we're going to be using this tool right up at the very top left. This is called the Ford Warp Tool. Basically how this wor tool works is you can push and pull pixels any way you want to. So for instance, if I had her um, nose, I can click on it, drag it to the left, um, or drag it to the right, either of which is not gonna help her out too much in this image, but that's basically how this tool works. 
You have options on the side for size, pressure, density, and rate. The size, I would recommend using a large size. It's gonna help things look a little bit more smooth. A small size can tend to make things look like a really rigid. It's, it's better to move a large chunk of hair or whatever at the same time, rather than like trying to do a, a really small size and then you're like, you know, trying to make that look smooth again is just not fun. You don't wanna do that. All right, so size you can control here or you can hold down control and option and click and drag to the left and the right. Okay, and then pressure and density, you're gonna want those about halfway, about 50% on both of those. Okay, there we go. Well, let's go ahead and start off by straightening out the top crown of our hair. We're just gonna start pulling some of this up and some of this down. We're gonna pull this area up there so it kind of matches, create a larger brush and start pulling some of this down. There we go. Now these hairs, we can actually start, I'm gonna push from the outside and we're just gonna come in just like this. All right, coming in from the outside and pushing them in closer to the actual hairline. All right, we're gonna do the same thing with these hairs too. Again, I wanna go relatively smoothly with this. In other words, I don't wanna just, you know, try to do one brush stroke. I'm doing a lot of little pushes to try to get the hair basically in line with what we want. All right, there we go. This hair I want, in general, I actually don't want it to be pushed in. I want it to kind of come out but the outside here I want to push in. All right, and you can even push hair up and that's how we're gonna accomplish most of the realistic, you know, hair looking like it's kind of all in the same line. All right, there we go, looking good. So we've got our general shape that we want now. We're just gonna start working with it to make it a little bit more smooth. I'm not worried about, you can see here where it's kind of like pulled information from the outside there. I'm not worried about that too much. We can always add back, um, there we go. We can always add back more background just like we did earlier. All right, and we can pull hair around there. As long as things look realistic, that's what you want. All right, beautiful. That's looking pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and hit OK and see what that gives us. So there's the before and the after. You can see it's just a lot more smooth and cleaned up, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. So just like we did before, we're going to create a layer underneath that. Let's just go ahead and create that new layer, grab our brush tool, and go ahead and paint that new background in. All right. Turn that back on. All right, and then I'm gonna put a layer mask. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of like a border there whenever you do that. Let's just stick a layer mask on there and I'm gonna paint black on the layer mask and that's going to just smooth out that border. You just don't want like a hard edge there, basically. That's your, that's your goal. You don't want any kind of hard edge. All right. There we go, We're looking really good. So we'll grab our brush tool. All right, that liquefy tool really is so nice because it does a great job pulling all the hair in from like the outside as well. All right, so again, there's the uh, before and the after. You can see it's just a lot more together. Again, just with the liquefy tool. All right, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take away some flyaways up here. And the easiest way to do that is with this tool here, the Spot Healing Brush Tool. Make sure you're on Content Aware and you wanna make sure you have Sample All Layers checked, okay? Next, we're gonna zoom in and basically I'm just gonna paint right over the hair that I don't want to show up. And Photoshop is going to do the rest of the work for me. Now this works outside of the hair, it also works inside of the hairline. Um, I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's just zoom in here. Let's say you have a hair that's like, I don't want that hair to be visible. Um, you can do a really good job getting rid of a lot of these hairs. 
get rid of that forehead thing too. There we go. All right, so that here, mm, don't <laughs> couldn't be much easier. All right, there's a lot of like skin retouching and stuff that needs to happen on this image, but we're saving that for a different section. All right, even if you have a hair like that that's out of place, try painting over a hair like that. And there we go. Photoshop should do a really good job removing those because sometimes these things like that little hair there, don't paint that away. Sometimes those things can be a little bit distracting. And there we go. The spot healing brush tool is gonna do a really great job getting rid of those. So whether it's flyaway hairs or just little highlights or you know, maybe someone's got like a crumb or something in their hair. I don't I don't know. I'm photographing kids and they're had some Cheerios or something like that. <laughs> Whatever it is. Crumbs in the hair. All right. That looks really good so far. Now, if I want to add a little bit more hair down here, let's say I want to fill this in. What we're going to do is I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to grab my clone stamp tool. And with my clone stamp tool, we're going to sample the current and below. All right, so that's going to sample whatever layer I'm on and everything underneath it. All right, so let's try sampling this bit of hair there. We're just going to sample and I'm going to paint on a new layer, just like that. All right, now if I move this around, you can see it has white and the hair and it's just a regular clone stamp. So I'm going to change my layer blend mode from normal down to darken. And that's going to get rid of the white. So now basically all I have is hair and I could put it on her teeth if I wanted to. We could make hairy teeth. Um, don't want to do that actually. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to flip this horizontally. We're just going to fill this area in with hair a little bit more. No, flip horizontally didn't, didn't do exactly what I wanted there. Let's just try rotating this around. All right. So you can see some of this hair is like the same pattern over and over again. So you want to kind of avoid the same pattern showing up over and over again. So we'll put our hair, you know, somewhere right about there. Hold Alt or Option. Click on the layer mask, which puts a black layer mask. And there we go. If we want to fill in more hair, we can do that really, really easily. And it's going to have natural ends on it because we just basically just copied other hair. All right. Now, if you have a different photo of the same subject, you could definitely just use that photo so you wouldn't be clone stamping the exact same hair, if that makes sense. All right, cool. Next thing we're gonna do is add a little bit of shine and color to her hair, because it's it's gorgeous, gorgeous color. We're just gonna help it bring out a little bit more of its natural color. So I'm gonna grab my adjustment layer. We're gonna go to color balance. And now here in my color balance, we're gonna play with our highlights. And the highlights in the hair are a little bit cool. I think we can warm them up a little bit basically put a little bit more like brown. See how they're a little bluish now? So we're gonna take our color, we're gonna push this towards yellow and towards red, and then a little bit of green. Okay, now I'm gonna hit Controller Command I, which is gonna invert that layer mask, and we're gonna use our brush tool and paint white here on the hair. <laughs> and you can see it's actually affected the hair even more than I thought it would. I really just want to affect the highlights. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But if you wanted to just change hair color, this is, hey, there you go. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and find out something that looks a, a little bit more natural. Pump the greens up. All right, there we go, looking good. Now we're gonna use blend if to make this just visible where the underlying layer is lighter. So just the highlights, okay? To get to blend if, just double click on your color balance layer. You'll get this layer style here. And now blend if, we're gonna hold alt or option on the left side here to make this layer not visible where the underlying layer is darker. Again, because we really only want this to show up where the highlights of the hair are, right? Just like that. I don't need to go around coloring the re the whole head. That's not that's not my goal here. Just the highlights of the hair. 
All right, so all this stuff here towards the very edge, we wanna go ahead and remove that if we can. All right. There we go. So you can see adding a nice bit of color and warmth to the hair. Really nice. Now, if you want to fine tune the color, just double click on that again. Let's go back to our highlights and then we can just kind of play around with our color here. A little more red, less red. All right, to get something that looks pretty natural. Okay, now let's grab a curves adjustment layer and I want to click on my RGB to bring that a little bit brighter. Okay, and now we're going to add a little bit of red here and a little bit of green as well. All right, I'm gonna hit Controller Command I on that layer. And then I'm gonna paint just where I want some of the highlights to show up. So just in this area and in that area too. All right, so we're just further enhancing the highlights just a little bit more. And she does have dark hair, but we wanna give it a little bit of life. All right, so let's see the before and the after with that, just a little bit more. There we go, a little bit more color. Let's put a little bit more red in there. All right, looking good. Okay, so we fixed that, we cleaned that up, we did that, we straightened it out, and we pushed more information onto the right side of the photo. And that hair looks super, super good. It looks really happy and healthy and shiny. There's so one more thing we're gonna do. On the very top of everything, I'm just gonna create a white highlight here. Just paint with like literally just white. Okay, and we'll do it down here as well. All right, and now we'll use Blend Diff to have this just visible on the highlights. So double click here, Alt or Option on the left side. Boom, bring that in. All right, and have it just start to appear where we see highlights. So you can see it's pretty much invisible there. There it's showing up. All right, and there we go. A little bit more highlight, just brightens up the hair just a little bit more, which I think looks great. All right, very nice. Let's go ahead and group all of those together, and we can see our before and after. So here is our before, and there's the after. Awesome. Hair looks really, really good. All right. Perfect. Moving on to the next photo.